dear students, welcome to Experimental Techniques and Material Characterizations Lecture Number 10. I am Dr. Parvez Ahmed. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we will continue our discussions on uh, energy dispersal uh, spectroscopy, that is uh, EDS. Uh, in this part, uh, we will, uh, we will uh, discuss that how EDS uh, work. So, let's proceed towards today's lecture, uh, that is uh, the working of uh, uh, EDS. So, uh, just like we mentioned on the previous, uh, in the previous lecture, uh, that the most common type of the EDS detector is the uh, uh, silicon lithium detector. Uh, what it means, it means that it is mostly uh, some sort of uh, a semiconductor uh, detector. Uh, so, you know that uh, a semiconductor uh, like uh, silicon has a fully aquified valence band and largely uh, unfilled conduction band uh, separated by an energy gap uh, that is equal to 1.1 electron volt. So, incident energy can raise electrons uh, from the valence band to uh, the conduction band. So, when X-ray had uh, the silicon uh, lithium crystals uh, in an EDS detector, so it produces a specific number of the electron hole pairs. Uh, that is proportions to the X-ray energy. So, uh, for that we consider an example. And as an example, we consider that if we have a pair of electron hole pair, uh, electron in hole, uh, that is being generated with an energy of 3.8 electron volt. Uh, so, if we have uh, uh, an X-ray from the ions. Uh, with an energy that is equal to 6404 electron volt. So, by uh, this analogy, uh, we can generate a 1685 electron hole uh, fare. So, uh, with the bias applied across the crystals, the hole are swept to the one side and the electrons to the other, uh, producing a weak uh, charge. So, uh, boron is important except impurity and the silicon and uh, degraded, that is, permit uh, thermal excitations. And lithium is uh, trapped and donor impurity, that is, herein, uh, to counter its uh, effect. So, here you can see that we have put a static. So, what it means, the static? Statics mean that. A 1.1 electron volt of energy wasted and the lattice vibration, etc. And there is another double static on the bias. What it means? It means that a voltage is applied between the two points, for example, a positive of 1500 volt and other negative 1500 volt. So, inside the detector, what actually happens when the X ray interact with the detector? So, here you can see that uh, we have X ray. Uh, and when the X ray are observed by the silicon crystals and the detectors, uh, so uh, you know that it interact here with the, uh, we interact with the crystal. So, uh, this portion is being enlarged and separately shown here. Uh, so, here you can see that an energy, uh, an X ray, a particular energy is come through the window. And it's interact with the uh, with the silicon uh, crystals, uh, in a silicon crystal with the cash shells. So uh, electron is being ejected uh, with this amount of the energy. This is called the photoelectron. So the photoelectron then creates uh, the electron hole pair as it scattered uh, elastically uh, in the materials. So the silicon atom is unstable. And it will either emit a characteristic auger electrons or silicon K alpha X rays. Now, there are two possibilities for uh, the uh, silicon K alpha X rays and for the auger electron. So, if we have the auger electron, so it is scatters uh, inelastically and produces electron hole pair. And if we have silicon uh, K alpha X rays, so it can be observed. And a similar process, or it can be scattered and elastically. So, in either case, uh, the energy will end up as electron hole pair. So, the result and sum is the conversion of all the X rays energy into electron hole pair. 
uh, with the two exceptions. So what are those two exceptions? So here you can see the artifact uh, that is silicon escape peaks, uh, silicon internal fluorescent peak. Uh, so uh, there are two exceptions uh, to the previous neat explanations of how the silicon lithium detector works. So silicon uh, escape peaks are uh, artifacts that occur in a small percentage of cases uh, where the silicon K alpha X rays generated and the capture of the original X rays escape out of the detector uh, that is being shows uh, red in this figure. So you can see it here. So since this X rays uh, remove 1.74 kilo electron volt of energy, so the signal generated electron hole pair by the incident X ray uh, will be 1.74 kilo electron volt low. This will produce a small peak on the ADS spectrums, uh, 1.74 kilo electron volt below the characteristic X-ray peak. So another artifact is the silicon uh, internal fluorescent peak, which occur at the incident X-ray is observed in the silicon dead layer, uh, that is a green regions uh, that I will show on the coming slide. So that region is uh, dead to the production of the electron hole pair. But silicon K alpha X rays can be produced here, uh, which then end up in the low part of the detector and result in a small silicon K alpha ADS uh, peak. So, here on, uh, you can see uh, that uh, green peak, and you can also uh, observe that uh, the red peak, which we have indicated here, I mean, that is the silicon K alpha. So, how it uh, behaves on the spectrum. Uh, so, here on, uh, you can see it here. So what actually this figure show? So uh, here on you can see the uh, you can see that uh, a real spectrum uh, of a sample and th this is a real spectrum of the sample of the titanium metals. Uh, but there are uh, seven uh, peak beside the titanium, uh, the titanium K alpha, titanium K beta. Uh, beta. I mean, uh, except the titanium K alpha and titanium uh, uh, K beta there are seven more peaks. So here on you can see them. Uh, so at 7.4 kilotron volt below each are the respective escape uh, peak. Uh, here on you can see with the uh, blue arrows. So these are the respective escape peaks. Uh, and also uh, present is a silicon internal fluorescent peak, uh, which we uh, have shown here on the uh, with the help of a green arrow. So the iron and the copper peaks are from the excitation of the metal and the chamber. I mean here you can see uh, the iron and the copper peak. So what is the reason for the production of uh, these peaks? So these peaks are often from the excitation of metal and the chamber are a uh, sample holder by a uh, backscatter electron or a uh, titanium x-rays. So uh, we should note that uh, the sharp drop in the background intensity, uh, here on you can see that, uh, here on, uh, you can see that uh, on the high side of the titanium uh, K-beta, uh, I mean, which is here indicated with this red arrow. Uh, so we have uh, two titanium K-alpha. Uh, so uh, one is here, one is here. So, uh, and, uh, uh, titanium K alpha plus titanium K beta, uh, beta explain uh, shortly. So here's, uh, I mean, it's, it's the reason that why uh, we have uh, the extra fee and why we have, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the iron uh, and copper fix. Uh, I mean, what was the reason for the irons and for the uh, for the uh, copper fig, etc. So we should also note that uh, the scale for uh, the, sc the spectrum here. So the titanium K alpha maximum is uh, maximum is 1.3 million count. So these effects are generally weak, uh, but evident when we are looking for minor element. So when we are looking for a minor element, so normally we uh, count uh, those uh, even minor effect. Uh, we count them. So here is the uh, schematic sketch of the monolithic uh, semiconductor energy dispersive X-ray uh, spectrometers. 
so here, just like uh, we have mentioned on the uh, on the first lecture on the EDX, that the EDX consists of a window. So uh, this is the window. The material of the window is normally beryllium, boron nitride, or diamonds, or polymers, uh, with a thickness that is equal to uh, uh, 0 0.1 to uh, 7 microns. And uh, it has an area uh, that lies in the range of 10 to 60 millimeters square. And here you can see that we have here, uh, we have a reflective coating, and that reflective coating lies in the range of uh, 10 to uh, 50 nanometer. So here on, uh, when we proceed towards the body, uh, the body of the detector, so it's mostly consists of the uh, intrinsic silicons uh, with an area uh, that are with the thickness that is equal to uh, uh, three millimeter. Uh, I mean that 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 is the width or the or the diameter or you can say the length. Uh, uh, or I mean so exactly we can say it's the length of this uh, uh, detector. So mostly it consists of the active uh, silicon that that we can also call intrinsic silicon of three millimeters. And along with the silicons, uh, I mean th th this this is the mostly uh, I mean the the body, uh, the larger size of the uh, detector is consists of intrinsic silicon. Uh, which uh, equal to uh, three millimeters, and there on we have the electrode. Uh, this one is the first electrode. This is basically uh, the gold electrode of size uh, twenty nanometer. So we have one electrode at the front that is from the side uh, uh, towards the uh, window, and the other's uh, gold electrode is on the back. Uh, that is also of the same size that is equal to twenty nanometer, but that is on the are uh, rare. So just like that, we also have silicon dead layer uh, that acts as a feature of semiconductors. So one we have on the front, and uh, one uh, anecto silicon uh, that acts like uh, n type and of the same size that is approximately 100 nanometer. So it slides on the uh, uh, rear uh, side. So here you can also see the impurity in the uh, the form of the eyes. A layer. Uh, so you know, last time you mentioned that what's possible reason for the ice layer. So ice layers is being quoted here as a form of the impurity uh, due to the liquid nitrogen that's being used as a cooling uh, agent. So this is a brief view of the uh, monolithic semiconductor energy dispersive X-ray uh, spectrometers. And here on the working principle is being shown here inside uh, this uh, detectors. So that's all we have for this lecture. Uh, thanks for watching. But stay tuned for the next lecture. That will be lecture number 11. Uh, in that, we will discuss the energy processing and the uh, EDS. So stay tuned with the next lecture. Till then, bye bye.